Jay Pat. Okay, question. How many of you stayed for all four ballots? You stayed? <laughs> we came out of that convention, even though it took us 10 or 12 or 14, 16 hours, whatever it was, we came out with a great ticket. A great ticket. This is probably the best ticket that's ever been offered to the voters of the state. And now, in, in, in another three weeks, the Democrats are going to offer their ticket. And it, it will be the most liberal, left-wing ticket that's ever been offered to the voters of the Commonwealth. So the contrast is there. It's a stark contrast. Do we want a governor that's responsive to you all and to the people down in the coal mines and, and Virginians, or do we want a governor that's responsive to Obama and Holder and Bill Clinton? To the people! Okay. We want an attorney general who will say no, just as our previous attorney general has done, no to Obamacare. No when they try to take your guns away from you. No when they try to shut the coal mine. Or an attorney general who's already said, if he'd been attorney general, he wouldn't have uh, brought all these court cases Ken did. Okay? And then we've got a lieutenant governor, somebody that will cast that 21st vote based on our, our principles and Virginia principles. who would cast a 21st vote after he called Obama and Clinton and Holder to see how they wanted him to vote. The contrast is there. It's there. I want to call on somebody that I have had a great deal of respect for for years to introduce our next speaker, Rob Bell. And you all are... For a minute, I, you know, as the chair of the Elmell County Republican Committee, I would just like to tell Rob that we couldn't be more proud of the campaign that you are running, and that we will always be with you, behind you, and just so you know that it was, uh, you know, something that we, you know, just needed to tell you that we love you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow, when they asked how many would be here on a Tuesday morning at 10.30, I said, gosh, could we maybe move it later or earlier or lunchtime? This is an amazing crowd. Now, I want to see the show of hands again. Who was there at the convention? Wow! 8,000 fired up conservatives ready to get behind these guys and win. Wasn't it a great convention? <laughs> now, I want, to, I want to talk about all three real quickly. First. We have a top of the ticket who is the most committed, thoughtful, the brain trust behind the conservative movement here in Virginia. Let's welcome back to all my former UVA student, Ken Cuccinelli. A second, if you're at the convention, you remember this. It'll be perhaps the best speech you will ever have heard in your life. All of us were pretty proud of our speeches. We worked real hard, and then we heard his, and we all just wanted to stay home and stop. <laughs> there were more undecided voters who decided to vote for E.W. not just because of the speech, but for what he stands for. Let's have a round of applause for E.W. Jackson. <laughs> and then... I have spent the last year and a half traveling around the state with Mark Openshain. There's nobody I am prouder of, who I look forward to supporting, who will be a better Attorney General. He believes in the Constitution as strongly as anybody here. He was co-author of the Property Rights Amendment. When I had a tough bill, I went across the, across the Capitol. He would get it passed through the Senate, which is a lot harder than getting something passed through the House. Let's have a warm, warm welcome for our next Attorney General, the great Mark Openshain. Listen, let me just say one word about the convention. Here. You know, I have had the great privilege of traveling around the Commonwealth of Virginia for the past two and a half years, side by side with Rob Bell. And I have to say, 
that it was a great privilege. Rob is a great candidate. He is a great legislator. He ran a great race. You wore me out. <laughs> and I have been telling people for a long time that I'm grateful for the positive tone that we were able to maintain during the course of this race. And I knew, I knew that whichever one of us came out of this convention as the victor, we were going to have the wind at our back. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in another big round of applause for Rob Bell. Now, let me ask you, are you ready to elect Ken Cuccinelli, the next governor of Virginia? How about E.W. Jackson, lieutenant governor of Virginia? and maybe electing an attorney general. Well, I'm here to tell you that we're going to take this fight to every corner of the Commonwealth, and we're not going to let up until we win in November. We have a tough task in front of us. We have a determined opposition, but we're even more determined. We are ready to take it to them. I'm running for attorney general because I know that we've got a president who has time and again ignored the limitations been placed on, that have been placed on him by the Constitution. And fortunately, this guy has had the courage, the guts, and determination to stand up to that president at every turn. I'm proud of the fact that he was the first Attorney General to challenge Obamacare. I'm proud of the fact that he stood up to the EPA on coal and stormwater and agriculture. And we're going to have to continue to stand up to an overreaching federal government on these issues, and I believe we're going to have issues ahead like our Second Amendment rights and our right to work laws, and I'm here to tell you that the administration is going to have to go through me in order to tread on our rights here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Now here's the challenge. All of us have got to get out there over the course of the next months, and we're going to take it to them. But I wish, and you living here in Charlottesville and Albemarle County, you know this better than most people. I wish that all we needed to do was take a big red Republican flag and run it up the flagpole and say, vote for us because we're Republicans. But you know and I know we cannot do that. We have got to stand on principle. We've got to take our message across the Commonwealth of Virginia, stand up for the working men and women of Virginia, for our foundational principles, for individual liberty, personal freedom, and limited constitutional government. And that is a message upon which we can build the kinds of coalitions that win elections. We win elections in Virginia by building coalitions, reaching out to independents and conservative Democrats, and believe me you, conservative Democrats are out there who feel that their party has walked away from them. And we have got to find them. We've got to reel them in. We can win this election. We're going to win it with you. Thank you. God bless you. Come on. <laughs> I met E.W. two years ago, and I made a mistake. I spoke after E.W. that night. <laughs> And ever since then, the rule has been, I'm party chairman, I outrank him, I don't speak after he does. <laughs> Y'all heard him before. He rolled up his sleeves here. I thought we were getting ready for an hour's sermon, but you're not going to go that long, are you? E.W. Jackson! Thank you, Pat. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reporter asked me on Sunday afternoon in our first interview at the end of it, he said, now, what did you preach this morning? It was an easy answer. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. <laughs> and thank you all. Thank those of you who voted for me on the first vote, on the second vote, on the third vote, on the fourth vote. And if you haven't voted for me at all yet, November's coming, folks. You're going to get that chance. Well, look, I, I am proud to be associated with a ticket that's speaking from the heart, that what you are hearing 
is not just what we think you want to hear, it's what we believe, it's who we are. And we're going to fight for these things with every fiber of our being. The, the attacks have already begun. I, I was shocked, I guess I should have expected it. But you know, one reporter said, you know that you know this guy, E.W. Jackson, is way out there. He actually had the nerve at the convention to say, we're gonna get government off our backs, off our property, off our guns, out of our families, out of our businesses, out of our lives, and out of our way. Guilty as charged. And we're going to take the message all across this commonwealth to those people who share our fundamental values but have been lied to about us. We're going to tell them in these communities, these black communities and Hispanic communities, these single women who are struggling, that we want you not to be dependent upon the government. We want you to fulfill your God-given potential, fulfill your dreams, take care of your family, and make sure that your children have a better opportunity even than you have. Folks, that's who I am. I grew up in a foster home. I ate mayonnaise sandwiches sometimes for dinner, sometimes biscuits and syrup. We have no indoor bathroom. I took a bath one a week on a Saturday night in a galvanized tub and I was the youngest foster child to get into that water. You know what that water must have looked like. <laughs> but folks, this is a country where you can start from nothing and become anything and we're not going to let them take that away from us. Now, Virginia is where the foundations of this nation were laid, and Virginia is where they must be restored. And we're going to lift up the light of liberty in Virginia so brightly that Americans can see it from sea to shining sea and be reminded that this is still the land of the free and the home of the brave, that this is still the shining city on a hill, that this is still the last best hope on earth, and that if you want to be reminded of what America is, look to Virginia and follow Virginia's lead. God bless you, God bless the United States of America, and God bless the Commonwealth of Virginia. Okay, you want to you, you take a five minute break so everybody can calm a little bit? Okay. I don't think I need the next to introduce the next speaker. If it's somebody you don't know, then you're in the wrong party. Our next governor of the Commonwealth, Ken Cuccinelli. Well, good morning, Charlottesville. Now, as your, uh, as your great delegate here reminded you, uh, I've been in Charlottesville before. I spent a few years here getting an engineering degree. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they, they kind of hold that against me a little farther southwest of here, but, but uh, not so much here. But I also have what I refer to as my Charlottesville family. And I saw my great aunt Loretta here somewhere. Where is she? Aunt Loretta, put up your hand. Where are you? I know you're short. Where'd she go? She's that short. She was here with me earlier in the beginning, and she's here somewhere. But uh, I got my, all my mother's cousins in this area, and uh, so I've got my Charlottesville family down here, too, that I spent a lot of time with and still do. But uh, you all are who I'm going to be looking to in the next five and a half months. Five months, two weeks, seven hours and 26 minutes. <clears throat> but who's counting? Uh, to get us over the finish line. And as Mark said, you all know how tough it is. You can't just walk out now, Marl Charlottesville, and say I'm a Republican, at least not you know, without Kevlar on. And, uh, and you, all, you all have got to convince voters for us one at a time, one heart, one mind at a time. And we're going to bring liberty to real policy. Liberty in the economy is opportunity. And when I ran in 2009, unlike a lot of my predecessors, I prioritized economic issues during the campaign. I didn't give an inch on criminal justice, and we've done some great things there. We've started the fight in Virginia against human trafficking. We've expanded the health care fraud fight. We're doing better than anybody ever in history. But, and it has been an honor to have the kind of law enforcement partnerships that I've been able to generate. And I want to recognize your Sheriff Harding, who's here off to my right here. Thank you, sir. Good to see Chip here. Uh, those are very near and dear to me. Uh, you all may see a TV ad that we're running. It hasn't started down here yet, but you've hopefully gotten the email. Uh, the, it's first about law enforcement and relationships, and, and uh, that's just started in Northern Virginia on cable. That, 
That's something I hold near and dear. Um, but what voters are focused on this year and what we need your help to communicate this year is our push to make Virginia even better for job creation and opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. That's why two weeks ago we started with our first policy rollout. It was on tax cuts that are job focused. That's why we picked the ones we did. They're paid for by closing loopholes and exemptions that other people get and have carved out in the tax code. And they also are paid for by bringing down the growth of government, which would have been worth over $500 million in the last year. So, you know, that's how we balance our books, unlike Washington, where they don't balance their books. And that focus is first and foremost on job creation. Well, then last week we rolled out our energy policy, went down to Bristol to do that for obvious reasons. And it's focused on job creation and on economic opportunity and lowering the costs of families and on raising the opportunities for businesses and making Virginia a more competitive place to do business, to start a business, to grow a business, especially south of here, straight south of here, where our best opportunities are for some pretty energy intensive uh, businesses, manufacturing and so forth, in the hardest hit economically part of Virginia. You know, these folks in Washington that Mark was talking about, they don't care about what their regulations do to people. They don't care. They talk about the poor. We're fighting for the poor. We're fighting for their opportunity. We need to keep doing that. We need to keep doing that. We need to be fighting for middle class families so that they can have jobs, so their kids can grow up have the opportunity to live and work where they grew up and stay here and stay here. And the farther south and west from Charlottesville you go, the more sensitive that is. The more sensitive that is. But that comes back to jobs and economic growth. This is the optimistic, hopeful Republican message and it's real. It's worked before. We know it works and we watch what they're doing in Washington. We know that doesn't work. And I'm running against a guy even the Washington Post called a Washington insider and a Virginia outsider. So we know which way he's going to go. His idea is more government, picking winners and losers with your taxpayer dollars. And my vision for Virginia economically is to get your government out of your way. That's my vision for Virginia. Because I believe very firmly that the greatest resource we have in Virginia is Virginians. It's not our government, it's our people. It's our people. And so you need people in government who respect that. Who respect that. I keep hearing the cheer of the people, the people here for both of these guys with respect to their remarks. We agree in that. We start from the same principled place. And we need to translate that to policy and last and absolutely not least, we need you all to deliver that message. Because I'm going to be outspent for my fifth race in a row. These guys are sick of hearing this. I've been outspent in four in a row, and we haven't lost one yet, because people like you all have helped deliver the message, positive message of economic growth. And if you can do it for us again, we'll win again in 2013. And just like 2009, America will be looking at Virginia for leadership of which way to go, of which way to go in government, in policy, and principles, and where better than Virginia to lead back to first principles. God bless all of you. Thank you for coming. And don't make this the last day in the campaign. Thank you all very much. Okay, the campaign starts right now. you got to approach it like there's a lot at stake like the future of these kids here, like the future of your grandkids, like the future of all of us, like the future of the Commonwealth and the future of the United States of America. It's that critical, and we can't wait till October to get started. So let's get to it, and let's elect this ticket, and let's keep the Commonwealth of Virginia in our hands. Woo!